I guess there's four aspects to creating a video, which I suppose would be helpful just to add a bit of context to each section. You've got pre-production, shooting, editing, and then distribution. Um, so what goes into, for you, the pre-production of a video? Pre-production for me is, I think it's a little, it's probably a little bit more slapdash than it is for most people because I try not to contrive things too much. So I don't have a schedule yeah. really that's, unless I've got a, like a book in for, from like a restaurant that actually wants, and that's quite rare because I don't like doing them. You know, if a place books me to, to eat a bunch of food or whatnot. Um, but for me, it's I'm just trying to come up with an idea which I think is going to be fun. So if it more common, the most fun I have is if I see a restaurant and they have like a food challenge on the menu, right? And I go and do it. And it's an inbuilt story. I don't really have to work much other than maybe a couple of gags, a bit yeah. B-roll and stuff that makes it funny. But that is your pre-production, isn't it? So obviously when you talk about um, the gags or the opening line, I've seen how much effort or like thought, which again, looks effortless on the video, What the, the amount of thought that goes into the, the opening line of a video. You know, you're quite an articulate person. I think you get your dictionary out on a morning when you're having, <laughs> when you're having a poo and go, what word can I put in to confuse everybody today? Um, so that's part of your pre-production. Yeah, that, no, that's just the, the only thing, the only good thing about doing a, a, an English degree at university, a non-vocational degree, you can't do anything with it, but you have a slightly better than average vocabulary. Yet you still use the word delicious all the time. When, when you, <laughs> <laughs> the delicious count in the corner. Yeah. Um, so much so that there's a drinking game now people play whenever I say the delicious, the word delicious. Oh, I can do that on the Christmas too, Leo. We'll, <laughs> we'll stick a beard video on it. <laughs> but um, yeah, so the, the, uh, but if it's, there's probably more pre-production that goes into something which is, I would call a more, it used to be the Sunday night video, which is something like, usually something daft, like I, I did um, Paddy Pimblett, right? The the UF, the MMA fighter, I did his um, daily diet um, a, a while back. And I, I did that with the conscious effort, uh, conscious knowledge that he was, you know, he was, he was all over the social media at the time. Yeah, yeah, he was blown up. Um, yeah, gone viral as they say these days. <laughs> and I, I thought it'd be funny because I just, somebody actually sent me the video of him talking about his McDonald's, his last McDonald's cheat day before lockdown. He's a funny character, you know. I thought I could do a Scouse accent, which I do a lot of time, you know, p- poke fun at that. And, um, I confirm that you can't do a scouse accent. <laughs> Mike has told me we've got a scouse that works. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, I, that was, that was um, but I, there was an idea that, I, you know, I've got a script. I don't have a script, but I have an idea of bullet points in my head. Yeah. So I'm going to say this is, this is who he is because nobody really knew him at the time, especially people that don't follow combat sports, right? So that's what goes into it that I think about what B-roll shots I'm going to get, if there's anything funny I can say. But that probably ought to takes me a couple of hours, you know, as, as I'm, it's not really, I, I sit down and brainstorm stuff. No. Um, so I try not, I try to still be organic, you know, cause you don't want it to sound like you're reading from a, an auto cue, yeah, you know. Yeah. But it's clever. It's clever. I mean, when we went to London, that opening line that you came out with and we were stood outside of King's Cross, <laughs> I'm like, there's no way you've just come up with that on the spot. Top, I, yeah, I, I can you remember what you said. I, can't I said something about. I made it. It wasn't really a gag, but I I said I called London Londinium, which is what it used to be called. Like um, by we'll, the, the we'll Romans. cut it, in, Liam. Cut it into the edit. Like, all right. So today we're in the uh, the bustling metropolitan dystopia of Londinium, and it, that wasn't supposed to be funny. But I like to do something which seems a bit quirky rather than just saying because I hate that seeing those videos where it's um it's typically people maybe they're shooting for like viral content sharing pages or lab bible, and it'd be a guy that they've just said can you stand in front of the camera today? Like yeah. just an intern or whatever. And um, they don't really know how to be natural and stuff. And they'd be like, oh, I'm, I'm in London. I'm going to go eat this. So I try, because I'm a bit wacky, right? I'm a bit <laughs> of a quirky kind of guy. So I just thought oh, it might be a laugh to say we're in the Londinium today, yeah. formerly known as London. And it's not really a joke, but it's like, it's something that I think just makes it a bit more interesting than just saying, all right, mate, I'm in London today. I'm going to go eat some food. It took me back. So I was like, you were like, right, we're going to shoot this now. And you just rattled it out. And I was like, because I said to you, have you been drinking? Like, what? <laughs> yeah. I've just sat with you for two hours on a train and you come, you come out with that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there are typically the first few lines of a video are going to be not necessarily scripted, but I would have thought about well what I'm going to say. Well thought out. Yeah. All right. So then we get into the, the meat and potatoes, the shooting. Any tips and tricks for that? You're the best person to ask for that. I think for me, it's just, I do, I do the best I can because a lot of the time I would like to film things better than I do. But for me... Um, I'm just trying to expose it as well as I can. Yeah. Because I shoot everything I shoot in log, which people might not know what that is, but it's essentially it's a, like it's like a grayscale, a really flat palette, which is essentially you send to your camera. I'm gonna sort out the colours in the edit in the post uh production. You just shoot like in grayscale, it improves the dynamic range of your camera, yeah. etc. So but in doing that, 
you need to make sure the color is as good as it can be the exposure is right and i often get it wrong very mm. very often and I, I save it and you might you might see some of my videos and think wow this, this one looks really good and then others you'll be like that looks f-ing terrible what was he doing <laughs> um but yeah for me that's that's it and because i've got to worry about the food coming out yeah I, do i have the camera in hand when the waitress comes with the food to, to get the shot it's not like having a crew. So like if Josh ever comes with me on a shoot, I'm, I'm a bit more relaxed because I know you can get some of that stuff. It's going to be way different for you because... Yeah, I mean, just to be more, I guess a little bit more broad. I think if you look at whatever you're doing, think about what could add potentially to that storyline. So we spoke about B-roll. B-roll is just supplementary footage to bring context to what, either what you're talking about or where you are or what you're doing. Um, you'll see Beard use it a lot with the transitions from one location to another, from a drone shot into a car. Um, if he's sort of sat there explaining what the meal is, he will then show different items of the meal if you're a a vlogger or you know uh, let's say you're a beauty channel get the shots so get the shots of the various little items because it it makes it so much more dynamic and you've got to consider the audience when you're shooting what could bring this to life more what could emphasize it more it'd be a case of yeah let's just add a few more shots in just elevate it slightly rather than just a static shot of of you talking yes it it looks more like a a film or a tv show i i mean the, the you don't, you don't want it to just be one fixed shot because that goes back to pacing. Um, I'm not trying to preach to you, do what you like. But um, <laughs> if you're just sat there and you're talking about stuff, it's it can become dull, you yeah. know, because people don't have the attention span for it. They're used to the TikToks and the, you know, Instagram shorts and all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, just uh, make sure you get s- things that can flesh it out a bit. And it's not hard if with a bit of plan and a bit of foresight. Yeah. I know what shots I, I get now. So like you say, I could apply that to a different channel. If I start, if... if uh, Mrs. Beard starts a beauty channel. I'm, I, she's not going to know what to shoot, right? Yep. I'll be like, let's get this. But are you going to be using this makeup brush? What makeup are we using today? I get like a nice shallow depth of field. And th- those, that sounds hard. I just whip on a nifty 50, they cost, they cost what you get used for about 80, 80 quid. Well, here's an example of what, a sh- what the shallow depth of field is. If you look at um, either this shot or Adam's shot, you should see my shoulder and, and this in the foreground. He's perfectly sort of exposed and in focus, but then the uh, beard meets food plaque at the back, they'll be out of focus. So that's just a bit more of a dynamic shot rather than just, that's you. Yeah, it, look, it looks fancy, basically. In, in simple terms, it looks fancy, <laughs> even though it's not very hard to achieve. No. Um, so yeah, that's I suppose that's the, the shots element. Yeah, I mean, we're editing, we've already spoke about that quite in detail, you know, the various ways that you could possibly pace and, and that's so specific to whatever uh, niche that you choose to go in. And then distribution. This is quite a good one, actually, because obviously it goes without saying you distribute on YouTube. I, I, I Even my business clients, I'm like, get it on YouTube. Google on YouTube. It'll rank. You'll rank for SEO if you're answering a question. So a lot of my, the reason I had sort of success on YouTube initially was in the videos. I was answering questions. So I was doing like searchable content. So whatever you'd sort of type into Google, like I think there's one video that's still ranking number one, like um, five tips to talk on camera. It, well, that's, a, that's a well-searched question i've got the answer for that so it, google now ranks that video as like number one um above even like a blog post or whatever um so youtube but facebook you know you get a lot of your uh this well, clout a lot of followers a lot of interaction yeah, I mean, that's the word i'm looking for I put my teeth back in interaction on facebook yeah, I mean, you got it's natural in the same. Think of it like a business. If you have a business, you're probably going to have a Facebook page. You probably it's free to set up, right? And it's easy for people to follow. You're probably going to have Instagram. You're probably going to have Twitter. If you're below the age of twenty five, you might have TikTok. <laughs> if you're into dancing, you might have TikTok and whatnot, right? Um, but that's just, it's just a way to to reach people. That's yeah. all it is, you know. I I I don't really I'm not really into social you won't see me posting 40 times a day on facebook and twitter and stuff like that it's just a way from if i a video will go up tonight on my channel and i'll post a link on facebook with some probably some daft pun about what i'm eating (laughs) i'll post on twitter and i'll post on instagram right and there'll be a a story on instagram that you can just swipe up and get to right and if you mention in your description or in your videos that you have these channels you know facebook twitter etc it's just a way by which people can engage with you as well. So people yep. send me messages. I'll be honest, I, I, I try to get to as many as I can. These days it's really difficult to get to all of them because I'm just one man. But it's just a, a way of networking, right? But just at like a high high scale, you know? Um, and there's got to be somewhere that people can. And things. That the good thing about social media 
um, is that if a video goes up on Facebook, people are going to comment about it, which might, which is then going to mean their friends might see it and yeah. whatnot. So it's just a way of uh, achieving growth. You just touched on that, that as well. Um, obviously, collaboration is a good way to grow. So if you've got a good value proposition, for example, if you want to work with another creator or meet another creator or get in contact, they are all a DM away. Obviously, it, it goes that same when you get to a million and a half subscribers and hundreds of thousands on social impossible for you to reply to everybody i imagine that your request folder is maxed out never mind your actual dm folder um but they are a dm away so if you ever wanted to collaborate with somebody that you think you could add value to or you, you know vice versa or somebody of a, a channel of a similar t- size you can collaborate and sort of share the audience and i think that's a, a really sort of poignant thing people think it's hard to get in contact with various creators but they are a tweet away a dm away the, to be honest the 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 Easiest way you're going to get in touch with a creator is if you go onto their YouTube channel and go into the email section, send them an email. That's the most formal way of doing it. That's the most likely way you'll get in contact with me because I get that's where I get a lot of my business related stuff. So yeah. if people are asking me to do, um, you know, this and that, all kinds of stuff, TV stuff, interviews and all that, that's going to come through email. Yeah. So it's, it's more likely I'm going to see that than a YouTube comment because YouTube 100%. comments, I mean, that's like a minefield. If you think about 500 videos on which there's, I don't know, 10,000 comments on every you're yeah. never going to get to everyone. It's just not doable. Yeah, it's not. There's no way. Um, so yeah, just bear that in mind. 